please welcome Camille. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, hi, uh, I'm Camille, and today I'd like to briefly talk about how design heuristics can help us design bounded contexts. And to be fair, designing bounded contexts almost never is as simple and straightforward as in this picture. Rarely, we can take domains from the problem space, turn them into bounded contexts in the solution space, and end up with an efficient and effective solution for a given problem. If we don't strip the problem out of accidental complexity and focus on its essential parts, we will inevitably end up with an overcomplicated solution, which will be hard to evolve in the long run. And frankly speaking, such distillation is not trivial. Fortunately, we can make our job a bit easier by using design heuristics. And design heuristics by themselves won't provide us with already baked solutions, but they should direct us at potential solutions that we will need to evaluate further. And let's look at an example. Um, let's say that uh, we would, um, let's, let's look at what we would consider when designing a bounded context for an IT product that aims to optimize marketing and sales pipeline in a software house. So, one of the most obvious yet very powerful heuristics is to pay attention to language at use. We can see here that the potential customer appears under different names at different stages of the marketing and sales pipeline. First, he's being called unaware or visitor, or then transforming to lead, later being called a prospect or an opportunity that later becomes a paying customer and hopefully in the end, a fan or an evangelist. Such language changes could designate where our bounded con context should, uh, should be designed. Uh, they can designate them. However, such language changes while indicative are not a signal that is as strong as if we had different things being called by the same name. So let's look uh, at that from, the, uh, from a bit different perspective. If we take a look at um, the lead, um, we can find that depending on the context that we are in, we would mean different things by that term. In marketing context, we would have marketing qualified lead in mind. While in the sales context, we would be speaking about sales qualified lead. And those are not the same thing. This is a strong signal that we either should be using explicit terms such as marketing qualified lead instead of ambiguous terms such as lead. And um, the other um, path that we could take, uh, we could design separate bounded contexts to get rid of that ambiguity. We could also pay attention to what would be the focus of a given context. Would it be rising clients' awareness of, of our offering or maybe growing clients' interest if, in our solutions? Another heuristic might suggest to look at what value would a given context bring or create? What's its goal? Whether it would focus on customer acquisition, activation, or retention. We could also look at, look at it from the perspective of what question would a given context try to answer? For example, it could answer how probable it is that we would monetize our efforts or answer through which channels are our potential customers coming from. And there are plenty of design heuristics. Uh, we can even amplify their usefulness by combining them with different tools and tactics, like, for example, analysis patterns or even storming. And let's look at it combined with event storming. So if we have event storming board that is filled with events that are significant from the main point of view, and uh, we have, and by that I mean that we have events uh, that um, have concrete impact on the domain, like for example, client needs identified rather than shallow events, like uh, for example, a lead became sales qualified that lacks domain impact and significance, uh, we can easily run multiple experiments using design heuristics, as long as we have those deep events um, that uh, really have the domain significance and impact. So let's um, take a look at one example. Uh, 
we could test the idea of having a bounded context that would answer the question whether we can fulfill the client's needs. And we can simply do that by marking which events would contribute to that answer, and then evaluating how complicated and coupled such design would be. Another idea might be to try to ask two questions instead of one, and therefore designing two separate bounded contexts instead of one. One bounded context focusing on evaluating feasibility of providing solution, or maybe even enumerating different solutions or, um, uh, or um, pr proposing what, what we could do to solve a given problem. And the other bounded context verifying whether a client can afford the proposed solution. That in turn might even bring our attention to asking further questions like whether the proposed solution would be still coming out of the identified decision maker's budget or would that be a different department's budget uh, if we speak about enterprise clients. So as you can see, bounded context, um, designing bounded context uh, and providing solutions that are fit for purpose my, may require running multiple experiments. It's not a trivial thing. Um, however, um, those experiments, we should be able to generate and run them early and at minimal cost in order to minimize risk and waste. And design heuristics combined with other, other tools like, uh, for example, event storming should allow us to reinforce running multiple experiments and quickly evaluating different designs and in the end achieving great results. So uh, that's uh, all that I wanted to, to show you. Um, however, uh, if you wish to explore more design heuristics, I highly encourage you to visit DDD um community uh virtual ddd community page uh there's a uh, web page dedicated to ddd heuristics take a look at them and with that with that i'd like to thank you for listening and wish you a great rest of the conference uh, have fun thank you Cam.